Pink Floyd Main girl only stand here, main girl's complete All we waited for now, past the future meet Get your weapons ready, kiss the ones goodbye Now our time is coming, and it is not the time to cry What is going on, everybody? Welcome in, Arvanauts. Welcome in. I hope everyone is doing well. Welcome to Thursday, people. I hope everyone is doing well. Welcome Thursday night to uh, the Day One Pillars of Eternity stream. It is good to see everybody. Uh, love you all. I hope everyone is doing well. And um, I have a, a kind of not-so-happy announcement that I want to make in a minute. But before I do that, I do want to ask people to do the things that you all do um, to make the stream what it is. And that involves a couple things. Number one, exclamation point CTT. What's going on, Rob? Uh, exclamation point CTT to tweet out the stream. This is going to be a big stream for the channel, guys. And so doing this would be a big help. Retweet the stream. Please let people know um, on various message boards, things like that. Click that video share button and let people know um, on various websites. If uh, someone would be able to go over maybe to the Pillars of Eternity people and just be like, hey, Arv's doing this. Again, don't be obnoxious about it. But if you could spread the word that way, uh, just take a minute to do that. That would be enormously helpful because um, I really want to have a great turnout for this and have a consistent turnout for this. That would be much appreciated. So um, if you guys could do that, that would be awesome. If you want to do more with my YouTube channel, which has been uh, getting tons of people lately, exclamation point ArvTube will bring you over to my YouTube channel, which is now up to 270 subscribers, which means we've picked up about 100 subscribers in less than a week. Um, the interview had a lot to do with that, I think. So that's a big part of that. Uh, and then last of all, exclamation point Steam Group will get you over to my Steam Group, Big Shock, um, which will uh, give people a 
a chance, we'll give you a chance to sort of hang out with the Arvanauts in between stream, uh, which is awesome. And uh, we have about 219 members over at that group. So that's also where I make announcements um, and let people know about stuff um, in between uh, streams and also like when the stream is going to go live and stuff like that. And even if you don't have a Twitter, you do have access to the internet. I know it because you're watching me right now. Um, and so if you're able to go over on like a message board, uh, like on Pillars of Eternity, Pillars of Eternity, Pillars of Eternity, Reddit, uh, and maybe even Pillars of Eternity, the uh, RPG Codex uh, are the three places that I'm thinking of. So if someone is able to do that for me, um, that would be lovely just to sort of spread the word about the show. Again, not being obnoxious, but just sort of letting people know. Um, before we get started, let me welcome everybody into the stream. Uh, it is a pleasure to see everyone here. I would like to thank uh, Yummy Goodney. Um, what is up, Call? What's up, Vacant? Hello, Top. What's up, Tom? Tom? What's up, Tomb Ecstasy? What's up, TNS? What's up, Tails? Hello, Sevenus. Um, what's up? I haven't seen you in a while, Sevenus. What's up? What's up, River Dusk? Hello, Red Sniper. What is going on, Rad Count? What's up, Sayara? Hello, Messiah. What's up, Mercurius? What's up, Kais? Hello, Joey. How you doing, I Prior? What is up, Head of Nixon? Hello, Rob. Game Crashers fame. What's up, Bronzel? What is up, Dorgo Dorado? Hello, Bravo Snake. Hello, Bob in a box. What's up, Arcades? Hello, Agent Goblin. And of course, my beautiful, wonderful, awesome mods. What is up, Apples? What is up, Burner? Uh, sorry, let me go. The other direction. What is up, Thorg? What's up, Shadowed? What's up, Lego? Hello, Dragon. What is up, Backburner? And of course, what is up, Apples? Pleasure to have all of you guys here. Uh, it is good to see everybody here. And yes, um, now let me just pop up. Let me get rid of, uh, let's see. Let's get rid of this. Let's get rid of this. And let's turn on this. Good to see everybody today. Uh, I hope everyone is doing well. And uh, thank you guys for stopping by the stream. Um, now, I have a not very happy announcement uh, that I want to make, and um, I sort of thought about different ways to talk about this, uh, and I thought that rather than either pretending that it didn't happen, um, which was going to be difficult for me to do, or alternatively starting with like really depressed, you know, down sad music and all that kind of stuff, uh, probably wouldn't be the best way to do it either, so... Um, so many of you know, uh, that, um, I've been discussing issues that I have, um, been having with my dog, um, who has advanced cancer. Um, and I'm sorry to say that, uh, we lost her last night. Um, it's, uh, it's been a very, very difficult, um, not just 24 hours, quite frankly, but it's been a very difficult, um, few weeks. Uh, and of course it's been a difficult couple of months also. Uh, you know, I, I saw this coming down the pike. Um, there was a point where there was just no way to be able to chase after the cancer that was in her. And I posted about this on my Facebook also um, once it happened. Uh, it's still raw. It still hurts. And um, it's going to hurt for a while. I mean, that's just that's just the bottom line. Uh, I got real tired of crying. I got to be honest with you. I got really tired of crying after a while. But um, but, uh, you know, it's it's something that we have to deal with as a family. And, uh, you know, if you don't, your alternative to not doing this and not going through this is you can you can not go through it if you just never get a pet. But then you miss out on ever having a pet. And I would not give that up for anything. Um, but of course, as I mentioned to all of you, it wasn't just about Lilo. It's also about what cancer has done in general. Uh, Lilo, my previous dog, Maggie, about you know, 13, 14 years ago, was taken by an aggressive heniosarcoma, um, which was cancerous. And of course, I lost my mother to breast cancer in 2009. So obviously, as you know, the human impacts are real also. Um, so there's a couple things that I decided to do rather than starting, uh, you know, starting in this way. Um, and that is, uh, number one, um, during the break, so I didn't want to do it to sort of lead off, but uh, during the break, I'm going to play uh, my song Requiem, um, which some of you have heard before. This is a song that I wrote after uh, about, oh gosh, 13, 14 years ago, I guess, um, after uh, my dog Maggie passed away. And of course, the song was really, although it was partly about Maggie, it was largely about my father, um, who I had lost in a car accident some years before. Um, a couple years before. And so uh, Requiem sort of fits the mood. Um, and so I'm going to play that during the break. And I'll also put up a picture of uh, Lilo just so you can kind of get a sense of who it is that we lost. Um, I don't want to bring everybody down and I'm not going to spend a whole ton of time talking about this tonight. Um, but it happened and I don't want to just pretend that it didn't um, because it obviously had a big you know, effect on me. Um, the other thing I want to do that's more tangible, and I've talked to some of you about this already. I spoke to uh, Rob, who's in the stream, about this uh, Game Crashers as well. Um, ARVCON, uh, which started out as kind of a joke thing, uh, ARVCON is a real thing now. ARVCON, I think, is going to happen. Uh, we're working out details on how. Rob has been kind enough to offer to host some or part of it. I have to talk about that with him and some other folks as well. 
But what I wanted to mention is um, that I know for a fact, I don't have the dates yet, it's going to be sometime in May, but it's going to be two back-to-back -back days. And if I can get it, I'm going to have other people sort of streaming along with me. I'm going to have a couple of 10-hour streams, but there may be live cam streams of like maybe a D&D &D session live or something. I don't know. I have to figure it all out. Anyway, um, the bottom line related to Lilo is that what I'm going to do is during that time, we're going to try to do something positive out of it. And we're going to take ARVCON and we're actually going to make um, donations a part of it now um, so that if people are watching and participating in it, um, you can contribute um, to a charity that's part of ARVCON. Um, I am going to decide uh, this year, I'm going to decide to have it be connected to something related to cancer research um, and uh, whether it's going to be, or cancer I should say, whether it's going to be about cancer research, whether it's going to be about a charity supporting uh, the families of cancer victims, um, that's possible too. Um, and it's not always going to be about cancer. If ARFCON is a success and if we do this again next year or the year afterwards, we'll rotate the charities. I know there's many, many worthy causes, but to be quite honest, if I can be allowed just a little bit of selfishness, um, this has hurt me too many times and I'm, I'm angry. Uh, I'm not only sad, very sad, I'm angry. And I want to do something about that anger that's real uh, and not just sort of sit around impotently just kind of going you know raging at the universe uh i want to do something positive so um even though there's lots of charities and lots of things that are out there at least this time around i want it to be about something related to charity so um i will uh do that yeah i'm, I'm sure it is a little bit low d burn it's partially because i'm feeling a little bit low <laughs> but um Anyway, so I uh, so there's going to be when it comes due, there are going to be some uh, charitable nations associated with ARVCON um, that will uh, you know that will be going directly to um, cancer research, cancer care, you know something like that. Um, and uh, so I'll talk more about that. So those are two positive things um, that uh, you know I'm going to try to do with what we have. Um, so. So that's my tribute as well. That'll also be my tribute to Lilo um, and my tribute to my mother and my tribute to Maggie, my previous dog, and, and also my tribute to all those who've been affected by this because it's a scourge. Um, it's a scourge and it's, it hurts too many people and um, tears apart too many families. And uh, I want to do something to affect it. So, um, so I promise again, I'm not going to make a big thing about it. Again, I'm not going to keep bringing this up over and over again, but you know, this has kind of been on my mind. I guess I think you guys can understand why it's been on my mind. And um, so I wanted to sort of express it to all of you. So for those of you who have been kind enough to express, uh, you know, your thoughts um, to me and your prayers, either on Facebook or privately, I've had a number of people who have contacted me. Um, thank you. I really do appreciate that. And it really does help. Um, and it's rough, but, you know, I'll, I'll get through it and we'll get through it. Um, and uh, yeah. So anyway. Much love to all of you, and uh, again, I'm sorry I didn't want to bring everybody down, but I also didn't want to just be like, hey, so it's just a normal day, and everything's happy-go-lucky, because it's, it's not, because uh, I lost her, and that's that sucks. Um, but that said, though, um, we also have life to live, people, and that's one of the lessons to draw out of this is you mourn the dead, you keep the memories where you do, you continue to be gentle with yourself. That's very important also. If you guys are going through losses or have felt those losses, my only bit of advice I'd give to you as someone who's been through more than a share is that you try to put it where it is. It's horrible, it's terrible, it sucks, it's awful. But eventually you are able to integrate it to a certain degree into your life um, and it gives you hopefully strength to move on and do other things with your life that are positive also. So that's how I'm going to do it and um, I hope that you guys will be in the same sort of position as well. So, uh, yeah, so I think that's all I have to say. Sorry about that. Did not want to bring everybody down, but um, I've already explained it. So anyway, uh, no, I don't actually know about the F cancer um, thing. I don't know about that, Shadow, but that's, that's good. I will actually take a look at that because I do want to make sure that whatever I do, that it's a positive thing. And again, whatever I choose, I can only choose one charity. I don't want to choose 10, 15, 20, 25 different ones for the first year. You know, I want to choose one charity and there's lots of worthy causes, believe me. Lots of worthy causes. Um, and we will get other ones of those as the years ahead come in. We will, we will sort of do other things. But this is just, you know, a little group of us doing what we can on the internet to make a difference. And uh, that's where, what we're going to do when that time happens. So, okay. There we are. That's it. All I wanted to say about that, um, and as I say, the only other thing I'll mention will be during uh, the break. Um, I'll have a picture of her up, and I'll be uh, playing Requiem as well as kind of a tribute to her. All right. With that said, 
Um, let us move on to some game playing, something I definitely need. <laughs> and uh, yeah, uh, the time has come, people, for day one of Pillars of Eternity. Uh, I would have been on even earlier, but I had to preload. I had already preloaded it. Um, yeah, no, I appreciate that, Shadow. That's awesome, man. I mean, thank you for letting me know. I appreciate that. Um, I uh, preloaded the game, and it was like, great, you preloaded the game. Now load more of the game. I was like, what? So anyway, um, but it's now loaded and set and ready and all that kind of stuff. Thank you, Baba Doe. I appreciate it, man. Yeah, thank you guys so much. So let's do it, people. Game time. All right. Now, you guys are going to have to help me with the volume of this as well. Um, yeah, let's get on with the good vibes. Stalling pillars right now. Good, good, good. So let me, get, let me know, you guys, whether the volume is too loud or too soft, but don't tell me immediately. Like, give it a couple of minutes to kind of, you know, feel out whether it's good or bad, and let's, let's go with that, okay? All right, people. We are going to play this on normal. We're not, which is what I always do. We're not playing hard. We're not playing Path of the Damned. God, no. We're not playing Expert Mode. We're not playing Trial of Iron. Nope. Not playing a freaking no-death rule set. Bah. All right, here we go. Let's do it up, people. Are you guys ready for some Pillars hype? Pillars hype, you guys ready? Let me see that hype. <laughs> Filthy be casual. No path of the trial of iron damned. <laughs> All right, let's do it up. By the way, this thing is killing it on Metacritic. I don't know if you guys saw this, but I've read about four reviews today, and they were all, like, awesome. So I was like, cool. All right, let's do it. For some reason, this reminds me of Lord of the Rings. Loading. Five wagons grope blindly for the path on a starless night, their master glancing ever upward to the skies for assurance that he is on the right course. A dim lantern, his only protection against the encroaching darkness. But the skies bring no comfort, shining no light, betraying no hint of what they know. That music, though. The caravan carries travelers bound for the frontier hamlet of Gilded Vale, you among them, where a local lord has offered land and wealth to settlers from abroad looking for a fresh start. You have taken suddenly ill, sweating and shivering, and one of the other travelers signals for the caravan master to stop on your behalf. He pulls up just in time to avoid plowing into okay, the trunk I'll fix that in a minute. tree that bars the way ahead. You will go no further tonight. I'll fix that. Thank you, River. Okay. All right. Character creation. All right. Now, I, I have to say, I am, I'm torn here between two things. Um, first of all, I thought about the possibility of making... Um, I thought about the possibility of making a, a human, I mean, a um, an elf or a human. I thought about the possibility of making uh, like a different class than what I wanted to play. What I want to play is a ranger, um, and I think I am going to play one. But I kept sort of going back and forth between what to do. Um, so I think I'm going to play a human ranger, but I have to admit that the cypher, which is sort of like a psychic wizard from what I can tell, seems also pretty awesome. So... Tough call. I am not playing that. God, like, no. Human or elf? Now, actually, for those of you who have played so far, a dwarf ranger, for those of you who have played so far, if I'm choosing between a human or an elf, um, what do you guys think? 
between human or elf for a ranger now. For a ranger. I want my guy to be a ranged badass. Yeah, druids do seem really strong. I noticed that even playing the beta version, the beta backer version. So human or elf, what do you guys think? For a ranger. The human has resolve plus one and a might plus one. The elf has dexterity plus one, perception plus one. So I guess for ranged, and actually, you know what? I want charisma too. Nah, I'm not doing godlike. For a ranger elf, yeah, okay, okay. All right, let's see. Wood elves. Wood elves, scared folk, trace their beginnings far north of present-day Adir and have migrated south throughout the forest of the continent, now covering it all the way south across the equator. They are also believed to have migrated across the sea to Er Glanfeth. While physiologically identical to one another, wood elves from Adir are culturally different from those in Er Glanfeth and consider themselves wholly different groups. Distinct advantage. Against any enemy that is more than four meters away, wood elves gain bonus to it. Accuracy, deflection, reflex. Okay, that's pretty awesome. <laughs> Sorry, apples. <laughs> Didn't mean to dismiss you, but... Pale elves. Polar regions. Yeah, no. I want a forest ranger. Okay. So the cypher's cool because... Uh, ciphers were once called Briskolgun, mind hunters by the Glen Fathans. Ciphers have the ability to directly contact and manipulate another person's soul and psyche, using an ally's or enemy's essence as the focus for their magic. Like, one of the things I read about was that a cipher can actually, like, make an enemy believe that they're fighting, like, it can create an image that they're facing their own pain, like, over and over and over again, which is, I thought that was pretty cool, but, no, but I'm, I'm really looking forward to playing a ranger. Rangers are warriors of the woodlands and masters of the hunt. Always partnered with soul-bonded animal companions, they can be found in wild spaces all over the world. As their lifestyles often tend toward independence and isolation, it is rare for rangers to become an integral part of a large fighting force, though they are often employed as scouts and guides. Starting ability. Animal companion. All rangers share a strong bond with an animal companion. The companions fights at the ranger's command and is extremely valuable for its ability to run interference. Animal companions don't do much damage, but they have high damage reduction. The link between the ranger and companion is powerful. If one goes down in battle, the other suffers, suffers as well. Stealth plus one, survival plus two. Endurance, 36 plus 12 per level is low. Health, five. Endurance is high. Accuracy, very high. Deflection, high. Now, ranger abilities. I could either do wounding shot. Oops, wait a second. Ranger abilities focused on granting, focus on granting additional offensive abilities to the ranger. Uh, let's see, increasing the power of their animal companions and strengthening the link between the ranger and the animal companion. All right. So, wounding shot. As he or she would with fleeing prey, the hunter aims for a spot that will slow the target's enemy progress. Target enemy's progress, hobbling the target and inflicting raw damage over time to it. Okay. That's cool. Or marked prey. Designates a single target as prey, giving the ranger and animal companion a damage bonus against that target. So I get two wounding shots. Yeah, I figured top. Uh, I think marked prey is going to be more effective long term. Alright, animal companions. All rangers form a strong spiritual connection with a single creature, their animal companion. This connection allows rangers and their companions to coordinate attacks and efficiently take down prey. In most situations, the companion runs interference while the ranger attacks at range. Despite these advantages, there are risks to the relationship. Rangers share a literal life bond with their animal companions. Yeah, I know they backed this off. Initially, when the ranger's animal companion died, it did, like, terrible stuff to the ranger. But, um, but yeah. Uh, when one is wounded, one can sense it and feel the tense emotional pain if a ranger animal companion knocked unconscious the partner suffers from bonded grief affecting accuracy and other stats until the downed allies revive that's cool if a ranger is ever killed the animal companion immediately dies from grief oh wow Whew. antelope let's see superior defenses deflection fortitude reflex and will okay bear high damage reduction giving them superior protection all forms of damage okay boar inflict more damage when they're below endurance mm. Lion companions, the ability to terrify enemies with a powerful roar in before they don't actually do it against anything that's big. Stag can activate a melee attack that does damage to all enemies in a small area around the main target. Or wolf. High damage. Yep. Obviously a wolf. No question about it. I seriously, I seriously wanted to name... I wanted to do this, but I don't want to look at her name constantly. It's just going to... It's too soon. So... Wait a minute.
What's up, Rumbletown? Yes, I can go through the companions again. Just give me a second here. Hold on just a moment. This taken from this. Alright, let's see. I wonder if it'll let me fit this in there. No, it doesn't quite fit. That'd be too much anyway. Case. Hey, Kawako. <laughs> exactly. How do I spell this again? Exactly, exactly. <laughs> okay. So, uh, yes. So let me go back so you can see. Oh, it doesn't let me do it. Here we go. Ranger. March Prey. So the choices, again, are, um, for the people who are there. <laughs> Rob. So the choices are Antelope Companion, which has superior defenses, deflection, fortitude, reflex, and will. Bear Companion's unusually high damage reduction, giving them superior protection from all forms of damage. But the key is it gives them superior protection, which is nice, but doesn't help me out as much, me individually. Boar Companion, inflict more damage when they're below 50% endurance. I mean, the bear will let me tank, don't get me wrong, but... Lion Companion have the ability to terrify enemies with a powerful roar. Stag can activate a melee attack that does damage to all enemies in a small area around the main target. Or Wolf Companion, which is what I'm going to do. Do high damage and can more easily avoid disengagement attacks. Disengagement, by the way, is a big thing in this game. Two things that are big departures from the Infinity Engine series. Number one, uh, engagement. When you are involved with an enemy in melee combat, you can't just run away from the combat. If you try clicking and running away, they essentially get attacks of opportunity against you. That has been a subject of some controversy on the forums, and it is what it is. We'll see how it actually works in practice. The second thing that's interesting is that you don't get experience, a lot of experience, for killing enemies. The vast majority of experience you get is from doing quests which is awesome it means that if i have to kill something to finish a quest i will but if i can work my way around it by say charming my way through encounter i can do that instead which is awesome no problem prior all right wolf companion and his name is case all right now attributes uh mental and physical strengths and weaknesses modify many gameplay statistics blah 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 blah, blah. okay so ranger is highly recommended uh, might is recommended so is dexterity now Let's see. Perception, senses, character's logic and reasoning capabilities, and constitution. All right, so I want to make him a ranged badass, so let me up that a little bit. Well, yeah, I think the problem was, um, Deburn, that they felt like... Uh, that it wasn't working properly, that you were getting punished for, like, positioning your characters by moving them around. As I, again, I don't want to sort of get totally into it, because I don't know for sure, but... What's up, Platinum? Yes, yes, it was. And they were, they were very influenced. Josh was very influenced by 4th edition, he said. Although, quite frankly, I asked him a question about that, meant making a reference to it. He's like, well, no, he kind of bristled a little bit, because I think he loves 4E. That's fine. I, I having, having dungeon mastered uh, first edition, second edition, third edition, fourth edition, and fifth edition, the only one that I missed was 3.5. I can tell you that fifth is, in my view, definitely the best. Followed after that probably by second edition. Um, I'm not wild about 4E. Um, I don't think it's as bad as some people think, but I was not crazy about 4E. This was very influenced by 4E. We'll see how that ultimately impacts, so... Correct. They did not have a tax opportunity in 2nd edition. Right. Right. Okay. Uh, let's add a couple of might points. And then I want to be... I really want my guy to be very perceptive. I should have another point in might. Take a look at that. Um... I like that perception, but I want to be able to do... I really want a lot of... I want to have a lot of speech choices where I'm able to do things because of, like, my, you know... I want to be able to do a lot of things through speech and conversation. I love that. It was one of the things I liked about Arcanum. So... Yep. 
Yeah, that's interesting, Prior. Could be. Okay, 13 Might, 11 Constitution, 16 Dex, 14 Perception, 13 Intellect, 11 Resolve. Trying to decide if I want to cut... I don't think they had attacks of opportunity as such, Tom. They may they may have called it something different, but I don't remember having attacks of opportunity in uh, second edition. I don't think. But I admittedly, it has been a long time since I've played it, but or DM'd it. But I don't remember them having attacks of opportunity as such. But maybe I'm wrong. Um, God damn it! I'm trying to decide if I want to take. I'm going to do that because I want to add... Let's cut that down a little bit and let's up... Okay, the perception. There we go. <laughs> Five minutes. I think I'll survive a little longer than that, people. All right, culture. Here we go, here we go. Culture. Ader. The Ader Empire is currently the largest and most powerful force in this part of the world. It is centered around the equator and has a tropical climate. Though the Empire has colonies in numerous areas of the world, Greater Ader is at its heart and houses the majority of its human and elven nations. Eh. Kind of boring. Thank you very much for the follow, Platinum Kush. Welcome to the Yarvanauts. Thank you very much. Uh, okay. Deadfire Archipelago. Ooh. Consisting of the nation in Nasatak, dozens of Amoa settlements, settlements, and hundreds of lawless pirate-infested islands that stretch along the southern sea. Deadfire is home to boreal dwarves, Amoa, and a mixed variety of other races. Deadfire Archipelago is the last stop. Archipelago is the last stop for anyone headed east. A multitude of monstrous sea creatures infest the ocean beyond, making travel virtually impossible. That's cool. All right, I'm thinking about that also because of the plus one decks. So I'm thinking about that. Thinking about that. Died in character creator achievement unlocked. <laughs> All right, so I'm thinking about Deadfire Archipelago. I like that. Um, Ixamidal Plains, located to the northeast of Air Glenfath. The Ixamidal Plains are a large expanse of fertile savannas, extensively farmed by human and Orland residents. One of the oldest in the world, though one of the least imperialistic, having spread out little over the past several thousand years. Plus one resolve. Eh. Old Valia, once the crown jewels of the Southern Sea, Old Valia is now the crumbled remnants of an empire of warring merchant nations. That's cool. Counting many humans and dwarves among their ranks, the Old Valian countries are still forces to be reckoned with and are proud of their rich cultural heritage in flexible form. Hmm. Let's see, Rauta, uh, Rauatai? Dominated by the Amawa nation of Rauatai, the gulf itself is host to a number of nations, most of them Amawa, Orlan, and Dwarven. Though these countries are relatively young, they are some of the most advanced colonial settlements in the east. The gulf is a land of riches and resources for those who can take them, though the entire coast is often pummeled by violent storms. Eh, con plus one. That's fine, but not for this character, I don't think. The Living Lands. The Living Lands is the mountainous region of a large northern island, renowned for its diversity of plant and animal life. It often is. That's true, Messiah, for sure. Its weather is unpredictable. And it's, it's like saying in a fantasy baseball draft, probably the best part of fantasy baseball is the draft. Honestly, I mean, I really think. Its weather is unpredictable and its ecosystems vary dramatically from valley to valley. The living lands are home to an assortment of races and a variety of colonial independence settlements. That's not bad. Plus one might. And the white that wends. A large, cracked southern expanse of polar ice. The White That Wends is home to pale elves and small colonies of daring explorers, outcast adventurers. While virtually no plant life grows in the White, it is home to many hardy species of dangerous animals that forage from the sea or prey upon each other to survive. Perception plus one. Not for this guy. So it's basically between the, Levi the Living Lands and Deadfire Archipelago. I think I'm going to go with this. I think Deadfire Archipelago. Oh my god, backgrounds. Uh, let's see. Okay, Aristocrat. I like it too. All right. Deadfire Archipelago, Aristocrat. You've lived your life amongst the nobility. Your days have been marked by lavish meals and extravagant parties or conversations peppered with talk of pedigree and bloodlines. Lore plus two. No. Drifter. You've never quite fit in no matter where you go. Each new town is just a place to rest briefly before moving on to the next. You're more comfortable on the road, traveling the world. Stealth plus one, survival plus one. Maybe. Uh, Explorer. You find the siren call the horizon irresistible. You cannot help but wonder what lies beyond the next tiller wave. You built your life around finding out. Lore plus one, survival plus one. That's closer. Hunter. You live for the thrill of the chase. Whether for glory or for sustenance, you made your living taking the lives of wild creatures. Plus one stealth, plus one survival. Mm. 
Your life has been spent laborer, spent in the study of your craft. You trained and prepared, hoping to hone your skills and ply your trade. Plus one athletics, plus one mechanics. No, that is not what he did. Mercenary, blade in battle is your way of life. You solve your problems by pulling out your weapons and applying force. Athletic plus one, lore plus one. No. Merchant, you traded goods from all over the world, pairing items with buyers of all kind. Lore plus one, mechanics plus one. No. Raider, you spent your life on the wrong side of the law. What you want, you take, and what was theirs has a tendency to become yours. Stealth plus one, athletics plus one, no. Slave, you've never known freedom. Shackles and chains have bound your existence. Someone has told you what to do your entire life. Athletics plus one, survival plus one. Hell no. All right, so drifter, explorer, or hunter. Let's see. Uh, stealth plus one, survival plus one. Hunter? Okay, so those are the same things. Drifter. I like Explorer. I like Explorer. I'm 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 tempted to go with Hunter. Um but the thing is I don't think that's like the makeup of my character. I don't I don't want him to be a guy whose big thing is taking the lives of wild creatures. Like I don't I don't not really. I think of him more as someone who's in tune with the land. Like he hunts if he has to, but it's not, you know. So, Drifter or Explorer? Yeah, Drifter and Hunter are the same bonuses. Drifter or Explorer? I feel like he's an Explorer. I feel like he's an Explorer. I feel like, you know, he wants to find out the world. I like it. Okay. Haha. <laughs> Colors. Oh, yeah. Nope. Mm. Eh. Huh? What? No. Fabulous. <laughs> what? Who? Okay. For real, though. What? What? I... Why? I don't even... I don't know. <sighs> All right. Ooh. Possible, possible. Nah. Oh, yeah. All right. Hmm. Pink equals aristocracy. <laughs> Pretty in pink, isn't she? Huh, huh. See, I feel like that's too dull, though. Like, I like that, but I mean... Whoa! Super red, that's stealthy. I'll tell you what, nothing says stealth. Hmm. I will be a romancing Iron Bull. No, sadly for Messiah, I will not be romancing Iron Bull. Kind of like that. Let me, as I go through this, let me see how... Yeah, I think that's good. Hair. Oh my! No. Nope. Legolas? <laughs> that's maybe a little too obvious. Uh... That's not bad. I like that. I just ruined the psychedelic first. <laughs> Rangers only wear green, brown, and black. Uh, Alright. Whoa. What's up, Gray? Still playing Trails in the Sky. Hey, Stolpin. What's up, guys? No, what the hell am I, Billy Idol? No. I am not Rutger Hauer's character in Blade Runner, okay? Not Roy Batty. No. That's Legolas, no. And I got nothing against Legolas, but I don't want to play him. Uh, also kind of Legolas-y. 
That's interesting. Eh. Ugh. Ugh. God, these choices are getting worse. Help me! No, there's apparently there's no zoom in for the face, which kind of sucks, frankly. Whoa! <laughs> I'm crazy! Somebody stop me! Oh my god, dude, what? Wow. And that's if I'm playing Shadowrun. God damn, man. You have the simple ponytail. Go for the fro. <laughs> I, I should play Billy Adam. With a rebel yell. He goes ma, ma, ma. Hey, it's Carrot Top, right? Uh, that's not bad. I kind of like that. Okay, so 12 is possibility. That's not bad. I like that. I like that. Okay, so then the only question is, let's see, now that I have the color down. Ooh. Hmm. Ugh. The hell? That's not bad, actually. All right, now the thing I'm not sure about is... No. Okay. Oi! You orcs piss off! <laughs> exactly. Um... Hey, Killabite, what's up, man? Okay, that's creepy. I'm going to go through these portraits and look at them, but that's creepy, guys. Did you see what I just created? Did you see the portrait they just popped up? Did Obsidian, like, hack into my computer and see what I was doing just now? How the hell did they get a portrait that was that close? Dude, is that... I mean, I'm probably going to stick with that one because that's perfect. It's pretty close to perfect. But, okay. Let me look at the other ones. Let me start with one. Alright, so six. <laughs> I'm going to be this guy. <laughs> Looks totally alike. Alright. I know the portrait's wearing green. It's not going to be 100%... Per uh -huh -huh. Yeah, six. Whoa. I know, right? Oh, stop with the green. I'm going to I'm going to break free from tradition. I'm an explorer. I've explored my uh my my uh sense of style. You can actually upload custom portraits in this game too. I want to break free. I want to break free. Uh, who's the name of that? Oh, that's cool. Completely not my character, but. And I'm free. Freestyling. Okay. That's, that's the best one. Alright. Now the voice, people. Now the voice. Yeah, how you doing, Killbite? Yeah. Now I am. Kill them all! A blade in the dark. Well, now I am the leader. Okay, too, too strong. Let's go! Steady does it. Yeah, follow me. Uh, Keeping quiet. Yeah, follow me. Yeah, meh, meh. I wanna break free. I wanna break free. I was trying to do Queen, Messiah. Onward! The better part of valor. I'm here. Leading the way. Attack! The better part of valor. The better part of valor. Huh? I've got this. Let's go! Oh god, no. Time to see and not be seen. No, I don't want Rob Schneider as my guy, thank you. Yes? I shall lead us. Sharp eyes and keen ears. Hmm? I shall lead us. Yeah. Sharp eyes and keen nah. ears. Hmm? Leading the way. It's between huh. it's between this and this. Easy now. Huh. 
Leading the way. <clears throat> Steady does it. Huh? Leading the way. Onward. The better part of valor. I'm here. I'm gonna go with that. And last but not least. I know, you're all shocked. Alright. Here we go, people. Achievement unlocked. Kickstarter backer. Thanks, Thorg. Okay, now, I have to say... Let me put this down here. I have this zoomed out. I'm going to have to click and see because I have this at like 1920 resolution. I want this zoomed out farther. The caravan master finishes addressing the group, his bushy red mustache and sagging jowls quivering as if for emphasis. Everybody stays close to the wagons, got it? Stay out of the woods, and beasts take you if you were planning a stroll through those ruins up there. He nods towards a looming black mass on the hillside. Whole area's crawling with hut-dwelling types who'd be happy to stick an axe in you for trespassing. So mind that you don't track mud on their sacred blazing rocks. Tonight, everybody stays put, and in the morning, we'll get the path cleared. Gilded veils less than a day out. Understood? At last the caravan man turns to you, frowning as he looks you over. Touch of the rumbling rock, could be. There's a stinging beetle around here, carries it. You'll be fine once it passes your innards. Unless you don't drink water, of course. In which case you'll be dead in a day. Okay. I'll check both things, because I want it I want to increase the uh, volume too. There's a berry grows in these parts, small and pink, called a spring berry. About the size of a fingernail. Give you cramps if you eat it, but the frontiersmen make a tea from it. Calms the insides. Should get you through the night. You might check around, see if you can find some. Meanwhile, I'll see if we can scare you up some water. I know you want to hunt before it gets much darker. But see about refilling our water first. Got a sick one here. He nods in your direction. Sparful nods and slides the worn bow over his shoulder. Where would I find these berries? They grow on a bush that's common around here, kind of funny looking. You'll know it when you see it. Doubt you'd have to go far off the road to find one. Okay. What are those ruins? Nothing you won't see on half the hills of Air Glonfoth. Money to be made selling their knickknacks in Defiance Bay, if you don't mind getting stuck with Glonfoth and arrows now and again. They didn't build them, but I'll be the effigy if they don't watch them like a mother bear. Amen to that. Of course, all the ones around here have been ransacked ten times over. Got nothing left worth half a pawn, so I hear. Wait a second. Nothing you won't see on half the hills of air Of course, all the ones around right, here have that. been ransacked ten times so, over. Got nothing left worth half a pawn, so I hear. Your character's attributes, skills, class, race, culture, and sex may all open up options for you in dialogue. These options are not necessarily superior to the other responses, but give you a wider variety of choices to select from. The manner in which you respond sometimes affects uh, their response to you. Who did build the ruins? Got different names for them. Settlers called them Inguithans. Nobody that liked them enough to stop them becoming ruins, tell you that much. Okay. Is it dangerous out here? This is a dumb question. Not if you hurry about your business. And not if the weather holds up. There's concern in his tone, but he does not elaborate. What kind of weather do they get out here? This time of year? Rain, mostly. And wind. But there's a different kind of wind out here. My resolution is... Oh, give me a second. Wick. Born out of the ether, the spirit's path. Never seen it myself, never care to. So, Thorg, I set it to 1920 by 1080. That's what the resolution was set at. So, I'll check and, you know, once we're back in here, I'm going to increase the volume on everything, and then I'll uh, check resolution. No, it's not OBS. No, this is what I'm looking at they also. You got Audra, where you come from? Well, it just grows up out of the ground like this. Goes deep like tree roots. Some of it all the way to the heart of the world, you believe the stories. It's more like a shell than a proper rock. Easier to work if you're a mason. Got all kinds of strange properties. Seems to have some kind of life of its own. Dies if it gets dug up. Loses its luster. Folks think it probably grew at one point or another, but not these days. The soul butchers in Defiance Bay use it for different things. I've heard tell it can hold a man's soul, but I don't care to see it. Got enough to worry about without seeing something like that. Let's go see hold about on. those berries then. Take someone with you. I What's know up, you're not some helpless tenderfoot. Not like most of this lot. 
But you drop dead, I don't want to be looking for the body. Got a schedule to keep. He scans over the travelers, resting his eyes at length on a sturdy, armor-clad woman who has spent the journey's nights sleeping on uneven ground without blanket Kalisha. or pillow. Kalisha! The woman looks up on her own time. He needs to find some spring berries. Watch that he doesn't drop dead. No promises. Yeah, see, this is zoomed in too far. And I don't know why. But I'll take what care of it in a minute. What kind of says something like that? Kind you can afford. Don't listen to her. You're in good hands. And I pay too well, if anything. Off with you. Hayden should have supplies. See that you're equipped before you head out. We're in harsh country. Get your berries and hurry back. And if you get so much as a tickle of wind, you drop everything and you run. Something in the air tonight. If it's a Beowick, we'll shelter in the ruins. Hut dwellers be damned. I can feel it coming the man. in the air tonight. Okay. So now, uh, I have to fix this. First of all, before I do anything, let me save it. Save. Alright. Now, uh, Kalish is a fighter, blah, 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 blah. Okay. Now I need to fix resolutions here. Graphics. Notice 1920 by 1080. I mean, I don't know what to adjust. I mean, what do I adjust to fix this? It's got V-Sync. Uh, how do I zoom out? Does anybody know? Thank you for the follow, Arusain. And uh, thanks to everyone here. Got a good turnout tonight. So thank you guys, everybody. Thank you so much. Welcome to the Arbonauts, Artisan. Um... Maybe I'm still at the default zoom. Okay, that's... Is that as far out as it zooms, though? That's zoom in, that's zoom out. In, out, in, out, in, out, in, out. That's in, that's out. Is that as far out as it zooms? Thank you, Apples. Uh, what was I doing? Oh, sound. Can you guys hear the music okay? Like, is the music too quiet, or is it okay? I just adjusted it up. Let me know if it's too quiet or not. Try talking again at max zoom. Go on, then, before it gets too dark. What you need? Springberries grow wild all over the place here. Keep your eye out. Music is fine? Okay. It zooms out farther than that. What's up, Game Misconduct? Um, of course. Okay, so I need to figure out how to zoom this farther out. If I can zoom farther out, I want it zoomed farther out. I'm playing in windowed. No, why would it... Yeah, but why would that be... But the thing is, I don't want to play it in full screen. I mean, as it is, I had to make an adjustment here so that it would look better. Whoa, boy. Here we go. I had to make an adjustment here so it would look better. Um, like, so it would fit within my window, but, like, I should be able to play it in, in, in window, no? I'm here. Switch to full screen for a moment. The problem is I'm going to do that, though, and it's going to foul it up when I try to go back. All right. No, it's the exact same. Doesn't make any difference. Ugh. Ugh. Alright, give me a second. This is why I didn't want to do that, because now I have to Ugh. Ugh, 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 ugh. Oh, sigh. Give me a second as I readjust the window.
Your zoom is fixed? How is my zoom fixed? It looks exactly the same to me. Alright, hang on a second. Okay. Um, this looks exactly the same. How is that fixed? It, do, it doesn't look... It looks the exactly... Right now, it's... Now it's windowed. That looks exactly the same to me. That looks different to you guys? Oh, also, while I'm at it, let me uh, move the chat here. Why don't you go over there? There we go. Yeah, I do, but... Now it's the same? Really? Are you serious? Okay, hang on a second. Okay, this is full screen. How is that better? That's full screen. That's full screen right now. How is that any different? That looks absolutely identical to me. I also don't like the 30 hertz. Honestly, it's sort of hurting my eyes. I mean, uh, not the 30 hertz. I don't like this resolution. Let me try this for a second. Ah, okay. Yes, that's all full screen. Uh... Ah, that's interesting. See, so now... I see it. I see what you guys are saying. I see what you guys are saying. So now it's zoomed out for you farther, right? Well, sort of. It's sort of zoomed out farther. The problem is the window's too... Yeah, but the problem is it's too big for... I can't do that, though. That's, that's off my screen now. I can't do that. That's off my screen. Oh my god. Alright, hang on a second, guys. Yeah, I am too. I don't understand why. I mean, streamers always ask for it. Streamers always say, please, 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 please give us borderless windowed. Always. I just don't understand why. It should just be an absolute. Like, you, just not, you should just never not do it. Hang on a second. What's up, Hillness? Alright, bear with me a second. I know that's messed up. Just give me a second here. I'm using resize enable to make this happen, by the way. Alright. 
It's almost right. Okay. Yep. Totally agree, Pryor. Yep. I totally agree. So, but the point is, even with that switch that I was doing, guys, I still was not able to zoom in. I, this still is not very far. Is there some command? What's up, Shattered? I know, exactly, exactly. I got into streaming, makes a big difference. Is there some command? I mean, that's not a very distant zoom. Is there some command to make this zoom out farther? There's got to be, like, a command that I can adjust. Is there? Of course. Because it's zoomed in too far for me. And I don't like it. No, sir, I don't like it. Yep. Yeah, I have a, uh, I have a program called Resize Enable. Resize enable is my culprit. Well, but the problem is, Shattered, if I don't do that, I can't play it at this resolution. Is there a console command to uncap the zoom? Can someone check on that for me? Would someone mind double checking quickly and seeing if there's a console command to uncap the zoom? Because that's really all that I want. Because the thing is, Shattered, if I don't do that, then what it does is I have three monitors and it basically cuts over all three monitors. Like, I can't, I can't zoom it in on a particular window. So... Hey, what's up, Sebji? I mean, right now it's 1280 by 1024, but before it was 19, uh, whatever it was, 1920 by something. What's up, Sebji? How you doing, man? Um, it's 1280 by 1024 right now, um, but I also did 1920 by 1080, and it didn't make a difference. But I would love a console command to fix the zoom. The resolution of the space I wish to get. Oh, it's um, it's eleven. Uh, what is it? The resolution is eleven seventy-two by something. And before you ask why are you doing that, the answer is because my monitor has an overscan problem, um, where I can't like all my stuff is slightly outside the borders of the monitor, and so to and I've tried doing everything TV mode, everything. I've spent hours on this. So when I reduce the resolution, I basically have a thing on my GTX uh, 962, um, 762 uh, to basically zoom it in. So ah, okay, okay. Console. All right, let me see. Uh, set zoom range. 0.1200. Yeah! That's what I'm talking about. There you go. I'm here. Yay! Yeah, look at that. Oh, look at that. Look at that! Why wouldn't you do this by default? That's awesome. Thank you so much, Messiah. Thank you, yes, guys. Of course. That's awesome. Look at that! Dude, that's badass. Look, zoom in. Zoom in. Ah! Pixelated campfire. <laughs> You're like, looks good. Let me zoom in, zoom in, zoom in, zoom in. Pixelated campfire. <laughs> yep. Exactly. Zoom in, zoom in, zoom in, zoom in. Pixelated what? Actually, that is not pixelated. That's my wolf. What's up, Case? Yeah. Whoop. There we go. That's the that's the stuff right there. Okay. Now I'm feeling good about it. All right. All right. Now I'm good. Now I'm good. See all the pixels. Super zoom in for that old school feel. Super zoom in for Legend of Heroes Trails in the Sky graphics. Hey -o! Yeah, I don't understand why that wouldn't be the default setting. They thought it might crash or break things. Oh, well. I mean, tell you what, I 
This is a lot better. Now I don't feel like locked in, you know. Okay. Yeah. Hey, chat. Case is looking at you. Case is staring into your soul. <coughs> I do remember that, Zebchi. Yeah, I do remember that now. Case is staring into your soul, people. Okay. I'm here. Dat wolf. All right, let's see. I think F5 is quick save. Yep. Yay. All right. Mm -hmm. So let's go talk to other people. Who we got? Caravaner. I suppose you wouldn't know much about Gland for the Thins. They're mighty protective of places like this. What kind of beast in these woods? And then you have the tribes. Who the hell are you? I've troubled with Odima before. He's never led us astray. They really don't look so good. Odima was right to stop. See more and more people on the road these days. Looking for safety in towns and cities, it seems. <laughs> That's right. What's up, Desiree? <laughs> Tab is a good key. Oh, it does the old highlight thing. Anyone see that? Anyone see that? Is that fine? Alright. What do we got here? Cloak of the Obsidian Order. Neck. The Obsidian Order is shrouded in mystery with even the Hand Occult having few clues about their origins. Some scholars have speculated that the Order's members are a diverse group from all over Eora, brought together by their love of exploration, fierce battle, and wondrous stories. Yeah! <laughs> What's up? Cloak of the Obsidian Order, baby. Who the hell is that? Tiny obsidian worm. Oh, this is all like uh, Kickstarter stuff. This small worm's scales gleam like dark glass. The creature all but vanishes in darkness, save for its bright little eyes, like twin rubies, and the faint smoke rising occasionally from its nostrils. Contrary to its fierce kin, it seems content to shatter your steps and curl up amongst your belongings. With my pet. Gon's Pledge. This item grants the ability to shield the wearer from the myriad perils. All right, good night, Pryor. Thanks for stopping by, man. That's true, Sniper. Uh, I think it might be either F6 or F8, actually. Uh, let's see. An aspect of the god Eothis, Gon represents the harvest of old age, symbolized here by the many interlocking sickles that form the ring. As Gon helps protect the dignity of old age, so too do his followers pledge to prevent young lives from being harvested before their time. Nice. And last but not least, a giant miniature space piglet. This tiny titanic pig has an otherworldly appearance that seems to be at odds with its endearing behavior. It follows you dutifully and requires nothing in return save companionship. Um. Why would I. I just. I don't know. Padded armor. Let's see. The most ruins are originating the air to empire. Um. <laughs> thanks, Thork. Uh, Derwidian clothing has changed a great deal since the initial waves of colonization. Derwidians favor tough garments often made from wool and deerskin. Due to the changing weather of the eastern reach, vests and other layers are common in dry wooden daily outfits. This versus padded armor. Heavy quilted wool or linen offers modest protection against crushing attacks, though it cannot protect against heavy attacks. It does not slow its wearers down much. Uh, obviously, I'm going to wear that instead say that's logical. Alright. So now... Ooh, look at that. Let's take a look. Oh, dogger, look at my pet! What's up? What's up, dragon? What's up, dragon? Yeah, it's my dragon.
I'm here. Of my, course. My wolf is like, what? Alright. Let's quick save it. And let's see. Alright, let's talk to Hayden. God, I love that extra zoom. Anyone need supplies? I've got <laughs> sundries for sale. Just make sure you hang out, uh, Dragon. Make sure you do, uh, make sure you're, uh, safe in combat. That's all. Alright, what's up, Hayden? Whoa, I gotta fix that. It's still kind of off the screen, though. I don't know why that's doing that. Why is that off the screen? You see a man wearing simple but mostly neat clothes. He's transfixed, however, by a ragged tear in the seam of his tunic. Got a whole wagon full of goods to sell, but not enough shirts for the road. He scratches one cheek with his knuckles. It's covered with uneven stubble as if he hasn't quite used to shaving on the road. Say, is there anything you need? I've got some basic traveling supplies for sale if you'd like to take a look. Who the hell are you? I'm a trader. Originally from the Adir Empire, but I've been trying to You're a traitor? a new oh. business out here. Traitor. Life on the road has brought some unexpected challenges, to be sure. And I'm sure you've noticed how prickly the locals can be. But we're here to make the most of things, right? We might as well try. With an outlook like that, I think you'll do well. I think these caravanners are prickly. Watch out for those axe wielders Odima mentioned. How incredibly naive I'm surprised you've lasted this long. No, I'm not doing that. Um, let's do that. That's excellent advice, indeed. You now have one rank and a disposition reputation. These reputations represent how people perceive your personality throughout the world. Thank you for the follow, Jesseriot. Welcome to the Arvanauts. Uh, even seemingly nasty reputations will be favored by some people, and benign reputations often bring out the worst in certain people. No disposition is inherently good or bad in Pillars of Eternity, but if your main character is a priest or paladin, you must be careful not to misalign their dispositions with what is favored by their deity and order, respectively. For the main character only, their dispositions will modify the effects of Holy Radiance for priests and Faith and Conviction for paladins. Okay. Something else you need? Looks like we're settled for the night. Tell me about the Aider Empire. It's not as big as it used to be, but it's still big. The mainland is a continent northwest of here, but the colonies used to include Rayad Saris and the Deerwood. About 150 years ago, Deerwood won its independence from the Empire. A fact our companions are quick to remind me of. Gives you a lopsided grin and nods at the other scattered caravanners. Uh, why'd you move all the way out here? Does it seem friendlier than Rayad Saris? My brothers took over the family mercantile business a few years ago, and there wasn't enough for me to do back home. I moved out to try and expand. Deerwood is a Felmer Erdire colony, so it seemed like a good place to start. And as much as I admire the Redarians' work ethic, they've always struck me as a little fanatical. It's high-minded of you. <laughs> Not a blush rises from under his collar. Not at all, just doing my part. Let's see what you got. All right. Let's see. Now, what does he have right now? Stores allow you to trade and sell your items for copper pieces or items in the store's inventory. Buy items from you at a greatly reduced price. If you sell something, you may see it appear in the store's inventory with much higher cost. Okay. I've got 100 CP. Uh, all right, hang on a second. What is he carrying right now? What is your weapon? You have a war bow. 1422 pierce. Okay. Something else you need? Crossbow is commonly used for hunting by nobles in the Deerwood, also employed as weapons of war by many soldiers and adventurers. Less powerful than their close sibling, the arbalest, cockbows, crossbows, cockbows. Cockbows can be crossed. Crossbows can be cocked by hand, have a moderately fast rate of fire. Mm. Yeah, but I don't want to... No, I want a bow. I don't want a crossbow. What about this hunting bow, though? Hunting bows are extremely... Uh, let's see. Hunting bows are extremely popular in the Deerwood and Ierkenfath. Oh, nice, Law. Thanks, dude. Top 10 Pose of Eternity chat rank number 8. Awesome. Cock bows can be crossed. You didn't know that, did you, game? 
You learn something new in this stream every day. Hunting bows are extremely popular in the deer wood in Iar Glanfeth, uh, though used most frequently for hunting deer in small game. Hunting bows can be deadly against two-legged prey. Hunting bows lack the high draw weight of war bows, but can be fired more quickly. Speed average, speed average. No, it's worse. Screw that. No. Hell no. No. Uh, what else have we got? Got a lot of expensive stuff. I want to get one lockpick, just in case. I'm the most famousest. <laughs> Time for the cockbow. Oh, gosh. Alright. These tall gra glass green pillars appear as if they've sprouted from the earth. The flickering fire sets shadows dancing within. Alright. Increase that a little bit. Okay. Alright, we're famous. Quick, pretend we're normal. Mm hmm? Okay. Alright. So, good. Now, I assume my journals pull open my quests. Yes, it does. A sudden sickness has come over me. Urge me to make a remedy before my condition worsens. Collect some springberry. Oh, the other cool thing about this, by the way, is that as you go through the game, this biography actually picks up on decisions that you make and it fills out the biography. So over time, you're actually able to check out different things within the journal, within the biography, which has an effect. So it starts out with your whole life you've lived for the thrill of discovery and exploration, finding irresistible the siren call of the far reaches and unknown places of the world. Many live their lives perfectly content within the confines of one small town, but to you such a fate would have been a death uh, sentence. You fell ill, traveling with a caravan bound for Gilded Vale. The caravan master set you off with one of his guides, Kaliska, in search of a remedy. That's pretty cool. Afflictions and injuries. Oh dear god, alright, I'm not going to do all that now. Statistics. Combat mechanics, oh my god, alright, no. Nope, nope, nope. Alright, quests. Uh, Gilded Vale, journey to Gilded Vale, and then I have moments respite. So, collect some springberries. Got it. Springberry collection, go. Let's do it. Alright, people. Of course. Time has come, let's go find some springberries. And that's that, so... That's pretty cool. That's awesome. Alright. This is like a springberry place. <laughs> there you go, Mercurius. Right, it wouldn't be hipster enough, right? I seek... Springberries. The fallen tree doesn't budge. Sap oozes from the jagged wound in its trunk. Not looking forward to trying to lift that thing tomorrow. Alright, that's the place that we weren't able to move before. Yep. Mercurius 100, hipster confirmed. Exploration is key in Pillars of Eternity as you make your way through the Eastern Reach. Open the area map to see what parts of the map you've already been to and what's left to explore. Alright. Found a lamppost. Whoa! What the hell do you have here? The corpse is cold to the touch and a ripe smell wafts from it in putrid waves. A dark crusted blood stain besmirches its simple linen clothing. That's... No problem. Alright, well, uh, stash time. <laughs> it's terrible that this has happened. Quick, stash. Wait, what? 
Padded armor is better. Why did I... Man. Almost put the wrong thing on there. Alright. Yes, it is, Nixon. Single player game. Space pig! Alright. Leather armor. Stiffer and more durable than ordinary hide armor. Blah, 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 blah. Balance protection and speed. Um... Right, I don't want you to compare it. I want you to compare it. Thank you. So DR6 slash 9 corrode 3. Recovery speed is worse. I mean, I feel like leather armor is more his speed than padded. Yeah, there you go. See, that's what I'm talking about. There you go. See, look at that. That's what I'm talking about. Some leather armor now. Whoa, what the hell is that? What? What is that? That's messed up. I didn't pay attention to DR. Yeah, I did. DR6. Damage resistance 6. As opposed to this, which is damage resistance 4. See? Damage resistance 4, damage resistance 6. It's got a slightly lower recovery speed, but... I saw that. A tree face. Digging this music so far. There's not a lot of it yet, but... Oh, the first time? Oh, 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 okay. Well, maybe. I've learned so much since then. That was so, uh, ten minutes ago, Top. I was just a young boy at the time. Use the tab key to highlight interactive objects in the environment. Yes. I knew that part already. Dear Cap. This is recent. Not good. Footprints around the campfire are indistinct and may have been here for days or longer. Yeah. Got a bottle of something. Got a beer. While few foreigners have much kind to say about the beer and deer word where locals prefer to endure all in narcotics, beer is still a staple of every inn, home, and drunken feud. Plus one damage reduction for 300 seconds. And a liquid courage. Oh, yeah? Well, if IGN gave it a 9 out of 10, that means that it's actually, what, a 7 out of 10? Hey-oh! Just kidding. But no, I mean, it's been, like I said earlier, it's been killing it on Metacritic. I, I read a good review in PC Gamer. I want Rock, Paper, Shotgun to uh, get a hold of it. Kotaku loved it. I don't know whether to be pleased about that or not. It is Kotaku. <laughs> exactly. 9 out of 10. It's okay. It's so sad, because IGN back in the day used to be good. What's up, Rebel Town? Good to see everyone. That's why Witcher is the best RPG series. Alcohol makes you stronger. I think you have a little bit invested in that uh, logic, Rob. I'm just saying. As a streamer who uh, toasts every entrant into his channel with uh, doing a drink or a shot or some such thing, I'm guessing you may be somewhat into the concept of having alcohol make you stronger. I'm just saying. Not questioning your integrity. I'm just saying. Destructor gave it an 8.5. Okay. I don't actually know. I don't really go over to Destructoid much. What is Destructoid's range? Like, you know, IGN, I was joking, but it's kind of true. That, like, their 9 is, like, they give everything a 9. So, it's like, Destructoid tend to go, like, 
more straight down the middle? Do they tend to skew a little bit right or left? Like my favorite of these sights is probably Rock Paper Shotgun. Sometimes they get a little bit too smart for their own good, but for the most part, I dig them. Um, I feel like for the most part, they have a good, you know, good sort of approach. So, Burned Lady. The hell is Burned Lady? Show me my stash. Show me my stash. Small and assuming white mushroom is a common sight in the deer wood. Okay. Despite their humble appearance, these small brown mushrooms are prized for their taste. Their caps are round and distinctively shaped uh, with small circular depressions dotting the surface. Depends on the person doing the review. I know you do, game. I know. It's cool, man. Let's it's cool. Those outcroppings. Hey, don't tell me what to do, lady. I'll check what I want. Oh, God. Oh, we got a wolf. Young wolf. I must challenge you with my own wolf. Help! Pillars of Eternity Combat uses a pausable real-time system. Because you'll often manage more than one character at a time, it's a good idea to pause the game, issue orders, and resume real-time to see the orders play out. The options menu also contains many choices for automatic pausing when certain conditions are met, e.g. the start of combat. All characters in the game have four friend and foe, four primary defenses against attacks. Deflection, fortitude, reflex, and will. That's very 4 -y. These defenses are based on the character's attributes, level items, and other effects. Accuracy is compared to the appropriate defenses when attack is made. If accuracy is above the targeted defense, the attack is more likely to result in a crit. Interesting. All attacks that do damage have to overcome the target's damage reduction. Enemy's damage reduction reduces the incoming damage by the listed amount down to a minimum percentage. If you're having difficulty hurting an enemy, try switching to a weapon or attack that does a different damage type. Most enemies are strong against one or two damage types and weak against a similar number. Alright. Sometimes a weapon or spell simply isn't well suited to penetrating an enemy's damage reduction. When the attack hits, the DR will wipe out all but a small percentage of the incoming damage. You'll hear your characters complain about it when it happens. Take heed. Note the damage type that's being blocked. Switch. Okay. That's just like the, my weapon has no effect thing. Kapow. Dead wolf. That wolf is dead. The wolves of the Deerwood are a large and crafty breed, bereft of the species' usual shyness, and they present a serious hazard to travelers who venture off the beaten path. Hunters who seek them out will not usually contend with a single wolf, for they travel in packs of varying size, presenting a challenge to any lone hunter. Their furry hides are valued for the warmth they can provide, and the teeth of the strongest wolves make for impressive trophies. Yeah. Sadly, though, my wolf was better than your wolf. My wolf is awesome. Your wolf, not so much. Ooh, are those the thing? Is that it? Is that Spingberries? This is it. Yeah! Spingberries. Odima says you've had some interesting travels. Let's see. I lived out on a frontier for a time. Yeah? How is it you happen to come here? Oh, clever. This, like, fills in the details of your background. That's pretty cool. No, that was a bad wolf. That was a wolf that was not a good wolf. It's like, Tom, there's good touches and bad touches. There's good wolves and bad wolves, okay? <laughs> Our wolf is better than puny deer wolf. Exactly, exactly right. And Wolf Rider knows what I'm talking about. Uh, let's see. It was too quiet a life. I was looking for something more. Raiders destroyed my home, took everything. Oh, interesting. Hmm. Raiders, I like that. That's a damnable run of luck. Maybe the new setting will turn things around for you. Ah, uh, been a long time since I've been this way, but I always did like it. Lord Radric's offer. Makes a girl think I'll give him that. You here to settle like the rest of the lot? No, I'm just passing through. That's usually the case with a big city just a little ways further up the same road. There are no neutral wolves. <laughs> exactly. What, <laughs> I'm not going to say that, Arcbound. That's up to you. <laughs> What's up, Smacky? There you go, man. I dig it. Uh, where are you headed? Nowhere special. Just putting as much time and distance between me and my old life as I possibly can. 
I'm going to continue on to the city, see where that takes me. I'll probably wander for a while, somewhere I can make some money. I like this one. Seeing as how we're halfway between nowhere and nothing, I'd say you picked the right spot. Anyway, I'm wasting time here. Odim will give me an earful. Let's be on our way. Hold on a second. Why are you here? Kalisa sighs unevenly. Her eyes search the ground at her feet. My sister moved out here some time back. She sent me a letter. She seemed worried. But that's how she always is. This time, though, she asked me to come out, and that's got me a little worried. I haven't seen her in ages. Been doing guide work in Iximittal. But I'd do anything for her. She's... Well, she's a much better woman than me, so I'm here and we'll see. Odim I've worked with before. He doesn't usually drive a route this way, but he's doing it for me. Tell me about yourself. I've got simple needs. I like open skies and far horizons. I find work that lets me live that way. My family wanders too. We started in Deerwood, but my parents ended up in the Living Lands. I've got a brother in Rautai and another in Adir. My sister in Gilded Vale, she's the only real homebody. All right, what can you tell me about Deerwolf? I'm not much for history, but from what I know, it used to be part of the Adir Empire. Broke off after a war some years back. The locals here are feisty, and that's how they like it. I've been out of touch, but I've been hearing weird kinds of things about it lately. People having trouble giving birth, I guess. A lot of them. Okay. Been going on for years now, but somehow it's getting worse. I'll have to ask my sister more about it. Let's get back to camp. You know, I wouldn't hold my breath that Sparfle's getting you water anytime soon. He does what he feels like when he feels like it. You should check up on him first. Slap him around a little. Stream's just down that way. Come on, let's get you your water. Alright, find Sparfle. Party gained 170 experience. So let's see. Um... A hundred out of a thousand. Okay. All right, let's uh, save it for real. Thank you for the follow, one bozo. Welcome to the Arvanauts, and hello to everybody. If you guys like what you see in here, my name is Arvin Elleron. I play lots of different games, but I tend to focus on story and narrative-based games, and particularly games like this, like RPGs. Uh, I had a chance to interview Josh Sawyer, um, who is the lead developer for this game, and I've been impressed about this ever since I played it at Gen Con, and... So far, I like what I see very much, so hopefully we're going to be able to continue that trend of liking the game. And if you like all that, uh, after this I'll be finishing up Trails of Sky. That'll be a, you know sometime down the line, but when I finish this, uh, I'll do that in a couple sessions, and then we'll probably play a Fighting Fantasy game book. Uh, and then after that, which I do with my chat, and then after that we'll take a look around and see what is up after there. Thanks, Burner. Hey, what's up, Aiden? Wait a minute. I thought... I swear to God, when I saw that before, I went over and clicked on that. What a surprise. Sparful went hunting. At least he left the water skins. Oh, you crouch at the riverbank and dip your water skin into the cool water while Kalisa waits nearby, keeping watch. As you rise, you notice her look up sharply towards the tree line. Out of the trees emerges Sparfle, one of the guides, barely discernible in the dim moonlight. He no longer carries his bow, and there is a strangeness to his gait, a spastic wobble in his ordinarily deft stride as he moved towards you with labored breath. Sparfle, are you alright? Zombie! Sparfle's toe catches on a rock, and he collapses forward in a heap, the feathered shaft of an arrow planted between his soldiers like an enemy flag. His shoulders. Message for you, sir! Trails in the sky, god damn it. Ambush. Oh boy. Well, damn it. No, actually wait. I'm you. Here. Hmm? You take on this person. You take on this person. I'm here. You fight to the death. Go! <laughs> Oh, archer battle. Yeah. Oh, 
I love that combat. That awesome. I dig it. Come on, we have to get back to camp. You're right. We have to get back to camp as soon as I loot everybody. Whoa. Agate, common on Eora, often used by craftsmen for their bright colors. Considerable hardness also lends them a variety of more practical applications. Hide armor, okay. Commonly worn by woodsmen, Glenfathen explorers, those who favor speed over protection. Made of layers of soft leather, does little to slow its weather wear in combat. I think what she's got is better. Yeah, and probably what mine is is going to be better too. Yeah, that's what I thought. Hunting bow. Alright. Take it all. Archer battles for the win. Hide armor, nobody will find it. Aha! Of course. Alright, so obviously we've already got a problem. Caravan is under attack, no doubt. It really is so 90s. It really is. It really is so 90s. Da -da -da -da. Oh, snap! Ten. That damage, though. God damn it, you murdered my caravan! No! Wow. All around you lie the massacred remains of the other travelers, peppered with arrows and knife hilts, splayed and bug eyed and filthy on the blood damp earth. Kaliska puts the back of her left hand to her mouth as if to ward away the horror like a poisonous vapor. A handful of dark figures stands above the fallen, treading on limbs and backs and heads, jerking their axes from bodies as if from half-split logs as they prepare to add you to the sprawling pile beneath them. Out of one of them, towering and severe, with a thick beard tasseled with knots, holds a wet blade at the neck of the man you recognize as Heodin, the last of your caravan left standing. Lay down your arms, trespasser. Do not forfeit this man's life for a fight you will lose. Hmm... Why have you done this? The ruin has not been sullied by our hands, men of our Glanfath. We have not trespassed, we really wish to pass through. I don't know what they did, I didn't have anything to do with it. Diplomatic, you'll pay for each life passionate. You'll try to kill us all either way, might make it easy. Let's do that. Your words carry no weight when I have seen the truth with my own eyes. Blood must be paid for this intrusion. So I say again, lay down your arms. Don't trust them, they mean to kill us all. Let's see. So, I could do... I don't have Might 14. I could do... Your courage is a mask. None of you has yet slain a true warrior. You can kill him, but you might as well be killing yourself. Uh, very well, let him go. If I put down my weapons, they're all dead. I feel like I want to keep following the lore business here. Judging by the string of animal teeth around your neck, I'm guessing you're worshippers of Galloway. If Galloway told you to stop protecting the ruins, would you? I'm going to go with this. The man frowns and motions as if to swing his axe. Hayden winces, but the blow never comes. Instead, the man cocks his head, intrigued. Of course, but he would not. It is by the command of all the gods that we accept this charge. How do you know? Because it's consistent with their beliefs, or because it's what you were told? The man glares. It has always been known to my people. I see. And what of Galloway's edict that weakness and age must be purged by youth and strength? You think Galloway would want some moldy, crumbling stones to survive long after their builders have turned to dust? The man's nostrils flare as he fumes. I got this guy to run him, causing him to challenge his own beliefs. He's like, wait, what? But he would not. He told us otherwise. Oh, I'm sure he did, just not you personally. But why should that stop you from killing innocents? Distracted, the man's grip falters on his axe handle and he nearly fumbles it, affording he had in the moment he needs to dodge out of his swing, which comes too late. Howling with rage, the man charges you instead. Oh, snap, son. How can I help? Hmm? Get the hell out of the way. Oh, wait, 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 wait. I take that back. 
Nice. Next. You scored a crit. <laughs> exactly. He's like this. Wait, what happened? Why did Dorgo get timed out? What the hell was that? Oh, it was an accident? All right. <laughs> Dorgo, I loved your comment. I want you to know. Can you untime him out, please? It was a j it, he was an accident, Dorgo. It was an accident. It was just an accident, dude. It was an accident. I like that comment, actually. It was funny. I, and I actually had this image of him doing this where he's just like, I will... Wait, maybe I should question my own faith. I don't actually realize. Let me think about... I maybe... I see... But oh, it... I... <laughs> you know. Uh, whoa, the giblets! Wow. Wow, the giblets are real. Your enemy lies supine on the ground, unable to rise. His companions now silent among the other dead. His breath comes in wheezing, fitful gasps. He looks not at you, but at the sky above you. Forgive us. Barely audible beneath his choked sighs, a whisper of wind stirs the air. At this, the man's eyes roll back as he closes them. Good. Good. The gods are just. A queer smile crosses his face. I am ready. Oh, snap. Oh, snap. The wind begins to swell, whipping around the camp, electric and volatile, upending pots and rattling tents like an angry spirit. You can feel it beneath to seep beneath your skin like a jetty beginning to succumb to the surge of a great wave, and where it pierces you it feels as though it is rending you apart from within. Oh, God. Seated against a wagon wheel amidst the howling maelstrom, slashed across chest and bowel, Odima's body stirs, and with great effort he raises his sagging head, his eyes barely open. He looks directly at you. Oh, hi, man. What's up, Fire? Oh, thanks, dude. I appreciate it. And that's cool. Thanks for stopping by. I appreciate it. Now Ray's dead. Get inside! Run! Oh, God. Oh, no. Straining against a gale that threatens to pull you off your feet with every step. Oh, thanks, Law. I appreciate that, man. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, this sounds like Lord of the Rings. Da, da. You set your hands on the worn folds of weathered rock and set about pulling yourself up the precipice. With the last burst of energy before your arms give out, you swing yourself up onto the ledge. I love these little choose-your-own-adventure things. He had in trails behind, slowed by injury and delayed by early hesitation. As he nears the face of the rocks, one of the fallen attackers who had been feigning death lunges for Hiaden and topples him onto the rocky ground. Damn it, Hiaden! Restrained, Hiaden lashes out against his fatigued assailant but struggles to break his hold. They are close to you. From your position, you have a good chance at hitting your mark. Grab a rock and hurl at the attacker. Your aim is true and the hit jars Hayden loose. Lurching to his feet, Hayden clambers up the base of the rocks. As he nears the top, however, the wind flares, pulling him sideways and tearing one of his hands free. Arr! But diving onto the hard rock, you manage to catch hold of it. Yes! Securing his other hand, you pull with waning strength, and it feels as though your arms will be jerked from their sockets. They hold just long enough for Hayden to set his feet and join you on the trembling ledge. There is a deep resonance to the swelling wind now. You feel it in the rocks beneath your feet, inside the cavity of your own chest, as though it would shake the marrow from your bones. Each new gust menaces the old stones before you, loosening connections and settling balances. As you dart beneath the old archway, the entire portal begins to fall beneath its own weight. Well, damn. That happened. Right, arcades? Totally, I was thinking the same thing. Was that... A Beowick. Had to be. A Beowick. Then we're lucky to be alive. And we're the only ones. This reminds me of Skyrim. Doesn't this remind you guys of being inside a, a one of the, the Draugr tombs in Skyrim, this music? Uh, I understand, Dorgo. I mean, I certainly appreciate everyone being along for the ride, man, but if you don't want to be spoiled, I get it. Oh, God, Parker, I know it. I know it. 
I'm going to go this year. <laughs> there you go, dear. I'm going to go to Gen Con this year. I'm going to be there to support the symposium and also to support uh, my friends in the community, uh, lesbian, bisexual, gay, transgender, um, members of the community as well. But I have to be honest, I want to see what Gen Con does next because that bill is so offensive on all levels. I just... So I'll be there this year, but boy. And good for Gen Con for sort of standing up for things as well. And we're the only ones. We can't stay here. There could be another collapse. We're not getting out that way anyway. Let's get further inside. Okay, 1725 experience. Quest completed a moment. Respite. Escape the ruins. I actually want to see... 607 of a thousand, so it was split equally among all of us. Okay. Cool. I've narrowly escaped the strange and deadly wind that tore through the valley, but now I am trapped in the ancient ruins that the caravan master told us to stay clear of. Lovely. Caravan has been ambushed by Glenfaith and warriors. Illness is the least of my worries now. See, look at this. See, they built the biography. Look at this. They built the biography. Uh, no, I don't think it's been blown out of proportion because of what it's setting up for. What it is is that Indiana passed a bill um, that uh, essentially would allow, that basically says that um, one cannot discriminate against religious beliefs um, and religious principles in terms of business. Um, I'm paraphrasing here, but more or less, uh, unless there is some compelling state interest for that to be the case. Which, more or less, if you paraphrase it, means that it allows people to discriminate and refuse um, to serve people of different, uh, theoretically, like, um, especially sexualities. Um, so, again, gays and lesbians in particular, um, if they are supposedly have some strong religious belief. In other words, it's a legal permission to discriminate. Like, they can sort of couch it in whatever they want, but this nonsense about it being about religious freedom is a joke. Religious freedom means that you have the right to believe what you want and think what you want and practice your religion in the way that you want in the confines of not just your own home, but in the confines of your church, of your synagogue, of your cathedral. What it does not give you the right to do is to have a business that serves the general public and then discriminate against members of the general public any more than you're allowed to, for example, discriminate against African Americans and tell them, no, we don't serve your kind here. Civil rights trumps that. So it's... it's it's just, it's ridiculous. It's ridiculous, and um, and it was passed by a Tea Party, basically dominated legislature. By the way, this is why voting matters, even in non-presidential years. And then it was signed into law by the governor, who was a jackass. So Gen Con has already said that they are going to seriously take into consideration this bill and whether they are going to return to Indiana in the first place uh, in, you know, coming, going forward. They're not going to do it for this year because it's too close, but in subsequent years, they might make that decision. And Gen Con makes a $50 million impact on the state every year. It brings in $50 million and 54,000 people on average growing every year to Indianapolis. So what Indiana is doing here, there's already been repercussions from businesses that are going to pull themselves out of the state. It is going to hurt them economically and for no reason except to enshrine hatred into law. It's a joke. So, yeah, I mean, I have read the bill. And I don't think it will stand up to a court challenge. I agree, River. I don't think it will. But anyway, I don't want to get into a big thing about it. But um, yeah, I hear you, Sniper. I Just the, the, bull, the bill is nonsense. It's nonsense, and the fact is it doesn't affect me directly, as in I'm not going to be discriminated against because I'm a heterosexual male. The fact that it doesn't discriminate against me is precisely why people like me need to speak up the loudest. Because it's, you know, I want to be able to speak up even when it's not about me. Um, and that's, you know, it's just, it's offensive to me. Anyway. Okay, sounds cool. I understand, Wolf. Thanks for stopping by, man. Well, you know, it's just upsetting to me, Dorgo. I, I just... You know, I feel like... I, I'll give you an example quickly. What's up, Axeman? I'll give you uh, an example quickly, and then I'll get back into the game. Um, I try to run on this channel. I try to have a community that is welcoming and open, regardless of ethnicity, religion, race, gender, identification, whatever, right? Um, and to me, anything that moves us towards institutionalizing discrimination and hatred, I have a problem with. That's all. Um, people can believe whatever they want to believe. You want to be bigoted and just, you can believe whatever you want. But what you can't do is then take that out into a public sphere 
and not just speak your beliefs, but have it actually affect whom you choose to serve. That's the problem. Well, they actually, yeah, they did make that point, Joey, that people, hey, what's up, Alien Tarot? Um, they actually made that point that you could actually now refuse um, service to people on the basis of having a religion um, that um, disagrees with people who are bigots. <laughs> you know, what's up, Salonis? Anyway, let's get back into the game. So now check out this biography, guys. I'm not going to do this every time, but I think what I might do is I might at the beginning of every game session of Pillars, I might look at the biographies. This is the last time I'll check it for now. Um, so you guys saw this, blah, 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 blah. And then because of different answers I've made and different things in the game, the biography is expanded. So now it says, hailing from Deadfire Archipelago, you chose to live among the frontier, along the frontier, living so far... Yeah, I know that. I know that. But the, the Religious Freedom Restoration Act, the thing is, it, it may be modeled on it game, but it actually does more than the federal bill does. And it actually allows um, people to actually make tangible decisions, which are problematic. I read the bill. It's, it's not just the federal bill. So, but anyway. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Living so far from civilization, however, made you and others in the vicinity vulnerable to attack, and a day of violent pillaging by raiders left you mangled and without a home. You have decided to travel to Gilded Vale in order to distance yourself from your old life. It may not be long before you depart in order to further increase that distance. You fell ill traveling with a caravan bound for Gilded Vale. The caravan master sent you off with one of his guides, Kaliska, in search of a remedy. While out searching for the remedy, you were ambushed and returned to your camp to find it slaughtered at the hands of angry locals. You dealt with them, only to be nearly killed by a wind that threatened to shear your soul from your body. You escaped with Hidden and Kaliska into an ancient 